Hello, people of the world, and welcome back to my channel. I am the Dirty Ducky, and today we're doing a redstone tutorial. We're here in my super flat testing world. As promised, we're going to go over exactly how my bamboo farm without quartz works. We're also going to take a look at a few other things because this is just a super simple version and this is my extremely overcomplicated version. This one does work too, however, but we're going to show, really show this one off. Now, the building supplies that I've got listed here today are for this max size farm. And it's not exactly max size, it's just this is the maximum size for a single activation system. If you you could potentially up to double this, but you would have to have another torch on the other side. And then if you want to expand it beyond that, you'll have to stack it up or back or whatever. You could also potentially make this farm smaller, but today we're going to do 12 shoot the bamboo. So for that, you'll need 12 pistons, uh, however much redstone. I'm not really sure on exact count on that, but enough. Two levers one repeater, and one torch. And then for the collection system, we're gonna have two powered rails, 10 regular rails, a hopper mine cart, two hoppers, and two chests. And that's just if you wanna have a double chest as your collection system, which I advise because it's faster that way. We're also gonna need an assortment of building blocks of whatever type. Uh, personally, I like to have the glass on the front, but if you are going to do that, make sure that you do glass blocks and not glass panes or else pieces of bamboo will get stuck on these blocks and they won't get picked up and you'll have some losses there. You are also going to need at least two sets of stairs uh, to put over your chest in the front, but uh, that's up to how you want to decorate it. This is just how I've done it. I've put the staircases all across the front so you can still open the chest. Now, if you're like me and you like things to be centered, then this is probably going to irritate you a little bit because this is 15 blocks across. And you'll see why here in a minute there's one extra block on this side for the build. But what we're going to do is find our approximate center point and we're going to start out just by placing the chest here and then uh, down in the floor. And then we're going to put our hoppers feeding into the chest. Next, we're going to go ahead and crouch, place the... Uh, two rails on top of the two hoppers and then one two three four on either side with a powered rail same thing over here one two three four and a powered rail now we're going to put a solid block on either side of that it doesn't really matter what kind of block it is whatever your building block is you're using as long as it's a solid block because otherwise the minecart won't bounce off of it like then we're going to remove this block add our lever and turn it on that's going to power the two powered rails on either side and that's what's going to make our minecart bounce back and forth and that's basically our collection system all ready to go i also forgot to mention the dirt blocks you will need at least 12 dirt i believe sand might work although i don't think it's going to work with the gravity physics i'm not sure that might be worth testing let's test it now okay Sand works as far as it will float on top of the blocks. I don't know if you can... Ah, yeah. Okay. So sand does work, but uh, we're using dirt. So what we're going to do is we're going to place a dirt block on top of each one of these rails. And that's where your bamboo is going to be planted eventually. Uh, personally, I now take this opportunity to go ahead and add the decorative blocks in the front. It just makes things a little bit easier going forward. So now this is what you have here. We are going to add a row of blocks, one up and one back from this. Again, this is just a building block. It doesn't really matter what you use. And then on top of that, above each one of the uh, dirt blocks, we want to put a piston facing out. That should be your 12 pistons right there. So now we go two more, whoops, two more building blocks above the pistons. And on the side here, on the block above the pistons, we place a torch and then a building block like that. And then fill the rest of this wall in. And then on this side, we can go ahead and fill this wall in as well. We're going to go one more building block higher than this, but leave that corner on that side open. Over here, we're going to put a block here, but then we're going to have redstone, redstone. Dust. And then we can go ahead and put our roof on, uh, however you're going to do your roof. This is all just building blocks. And 
then uh, if you want to go ahead and add your bamboo and your glass, now would be a good time to go ahead and do that. I told you wrong over here. I had you do this. Uh, it's not right. It's supposed to be down here. And there we go. That's that's what we wanted to happen. What we've done here is created a redstone torch burnout. Most of the time this is used to um, power this, uh, droppers multiple times to make them spit out several items. Uh, we're actually using it here as a block update detector or bud uh, and we'll talk about that a little bit more here in a minute but more importantly what we're gonna do from here we need a repeater on here and we're gonna go ahead and give it full delay because this flickers so quickly you need to uh, lengthen that signal a little bit to make this work then from here we need to carry the signal over And this is where our uh, length limit comes from because uh, redstone only travels 15 blocks. This is 12 blocks, 13, 14, 15. So any more than that and your pistons wouldn't be getting powered. So again, you could expand this just by mirroring it on the other side and having another torch powering another 12 pistons. That could be done. Or you could stack it up or you could put them back to back front to front, however you want to do it. But this is where this extra block here comes in, and maybe it's just my OCD, but I don't like leaving this open. So this is what I did with that. And that's, that's why I said the footprint was 15 blocks wide. That's not necessarily, you don't have to put that there. In fact, in the uh, survival world, I actually put the farm into the mountainside so that's already blocked off anyway because it's partially dug into the mountain and this setup right here is showing off exactly what i was talking about i've just put the torch on the other side so that it's powering this string of redstone all the time but other than that this is set up exactly the same and you see we have 15 14 13 all the way down to here and at number 12 this is a power of one so if we added one more on here you would see it it's not powered at all so if we game rule the random tick speed to say 300, it's 100 times normal speed, we can actually watch this thing work. And when that bamboo makes it to the top, you see it fires. Now, with the random tick speed turned up this high, uh, it, 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 does, it does break the farm. And that's because if this bamboo stock grows up to here before this has time to reset, then it's not going to fire again. But on a normal random tick speed this thing is pretty pretty unfallible the way i've done it here is your minimum size basically on the mallard craft world i've done it like this where it's actually set one block higher and all that does is make it to where it's harder for this bamboo stock to grow up before this is ready to reset because i have actually had it where this bamboo stock was trying to grow while the pistons were still firing. The, the growth speed on bamboo is pretty ridiculous. This will work. This is more foolproof. Same exact farm. I just added another block right here between the piston and the torch. And on the back side here, you just have to step it down one, which is simple enough. So as promised, we have a few other builds to showcase from other people. And um, apparently I'm not the only one that had the idea of using bud power, but we got a lot of versatility in the designs. I'm pretty excited to show these off. So this first farm that I'm showing here is from No Tis Me. And as with all the farms, his channel link and possibly Twitter will be linked in the description below. If anything comes, uh, updates this piston in the front, or the face of the piston or even on top of the piston it gets a block update understanding that it is powered and it will shoot out the piston while it shoots out the sticky piston over here in the front pushes the redstone block forward therefore none of the machine gets powered the pistons start understanding that they're not powered anymore and they retract and therefore this will continue to go on constantly um, and there is absolutely no quartz used in this build 
whatsoever. Challenge accepted. The next clip that we're showing here is from Troge of Genius the Genius Family Gaming. And in his video, he actually builds three separate farms, uh, one of which being a traditional uh, observer powered bamboo farm. The second one being pretty similar to the one that I showed off. And then the third is the one that I'm definitely most excited for. It's, it's an amazing idea and not something that I actually would have thought of. Behold the power of the humble chicken. The idea is actually really, 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 really simple. It's the same setup, the same design with the pistons, but it's triggered by a chicken. Hello, Jim. Mmm, Jim. Uh, and basically, the chicken will walk back and forth over the pressure plate, sending at random intervals, sending a redstone signal along the redstone line, which of course will set off the pistons. I see your chicken, Troj, and raise you some TNT. This next video is from Minor Thoughts, and if you've ever watched his channel at all or seen any of the Inner Realm series, you won't be in the least bit surprised that he's found a way to use TNT. Oh, geez. <laughs> is it efficient? <laughs> heck no. Is it fun? Oh, heck yeah so here's my overcomplicated version and i even though it is it is very overcomplicated i'm pretty proud of the fact that i managed to make it work uh what i did was essentially reinvent the etho hopper clock without using comparators and all it is is a redstone repeater clock uh, tied into these torches powering these droppers and it's all passing one block around and the block goes into these cobwebs eventually it takes several minutes to fall through the cobwebs and then lands on this pressure plate pressure plate powers this monostable circuit which powers the pistons and harvests the bamboo and it also powers this uh, inverter here which is keeping the hopper powered and that's just because the without that, the hopper sucks up the block before it can actually land on the pressure plate. Now, if we stand here and watch this for, then we'll actually see it work. It works. So this is just one way to do it. Thank you for joining us today. I uh, really hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I had a lot of fun with the whole idea. I want to thank everybody who submitted videos and who actually tried to participate in the challenge. I greatly appreciate it from all of you. If you did enjoy the video, I'd appreciate it if you go ahead and hit the like button. If you haven't done it already, please do consider subscribing. But uh, until next time, I am the Dirty Duck.